Folks, welcome back to Flatirons Tuning. We're here in the shop and we're going to talk today about hose clamps. Both kinds, worm drive clamps and spring clamps, and, and a couple others that maybe you don't know about. Uh, before we dive into all that, I just want to say, uh, you know, if you like the content that we're putting out, if you want to support us and help us keep coming back to make this content for you, please like and subscribe, share the videos, check out our merch we have on the channel, and the very best way to support us uh, at this channel to help us keep coming back to make this content is to go to flatirons.tuning.com. If you've got anything at all that you might need there on our, on our website, that support goes a long way to keeping the lights on and keeping us coming back to make this content for you. So thanks very much for your support and let's dive into it. Let's talk about hose clamps. So if you're working on a car, most of the time what you're going to run into, the most common types of hose clamps are spring clamps and worm drive clamps. There's, there's maybe one or two other uh, like a locking clamp that you might run into here and there, but these are these are kind of the most standard kinds of hose clamps. They have their advantages, and there's a reason. You know, they're easy to produce, they're they're cheap, they're easy to work with. Usually, with the spring clamp, the reason that, that those get used a lot of times it's, it's because it's something small, like this vacuum hose here. Um, it's just it's hard to get a clamp like a worm drive clamp this small to really like try and hold a, you know small vacuum hose. Uh, tight and make sure you're getting a good seal that sort of thing. Sometimes it's because you know the the clamp is placed in such a location that you can't really get any kind of a tool to to release a standard worm drive clamp and they usually work pretty well. Uh, the downside you know potentially with these spring clamps is you've got to be able to get something on them to release them and that that can sometimes present its own set of challenges and like when they're new they're, they're fresh metal and they're they're rolled into this this bend and they have a lot of tension but you know, potentially as they get old and a lot of heat cycles, especially like clamps that are in the engine close to something that gets really hot like a turbocharger, they can maybe soften up a little bit. So usually, you know, it's, it's always good to check these things. You know, if, if your car is old, you've got 100,000 miles or more, a lot of times it's good to kind of replace these spring clamps. And usually new OEM spring clamps are typically the way to go, unless, you know, you're able to get in there with worm clamps. Um, so worm clamps, this is the most you know, if you go to your hardware store, your, your auto parts store, this is the most common kind of hose clamp that there is. You'll probably see a big rack of all different sizes of them. Very common, very standard. There's just a couple issues that you can run into. One of them is, and you can kind of see in these some of these examples here, the worm drive is machined out of the ring. So that's where the screw grabs, you know, the, this metal to allow you to adjust and to hold tension. Sometimes what that can do is that ends up biting into the hose, we've got an example of that here, and so this causes, this can cause two sets of problems. One is that if the, if the worm drive band here starts digging into your hose, well then the tension that this is applying is not going to be uniform all the way around the hose. So you might have a lot of tension here where it's bitten into the hose, and then there's not a lot of tension over here where it's maybe sliding more smoothly over the top, so that can give you kind of inconsistent seal. Um, and then obviously, because it bites into the hose, it can wear your hose out. And over, over time, this can actually sometimes wear holes in it. Um, so if you're, if you're dealing with something like an intercooler hose that's under pressure, a radiator hose that's under pressure, over time, every now and then, you can actually have leaks created because of the hose clamps just digging into your hose material. The other thing, too, is that because the, the worm drive clamp doesn't evenly apply pressure to those, you can have just some inconsistencies there. And so usually, if, you, if you're using a clamp on something that's more high pressure, like coolant or an intercooler, you're going to see something different, and this is where T-bar clamps come in. So a T-bar clamp, it uses a, a bolt and a nut to squeeze the clamp, and usually they have, they'll almost always have this kind of metal to kind of help slide over the hose and prevent the, the band of the clamp from digging into the hose. Now, so T-bars, is a pretty common way to go to upgrade from a worm drive clamp. And the reason is you can kind of you know get a little bit more torque, if you will, to really seal that hose onto a surface. T-bar clamps are a little bit more expensive. Most, like if, if you're looking at uh, an intercooler, like from an intercooler kit, a lot of times this is kind of the standard clamp that's going to come with that kind of an intercooler because you're typically going to be running higher boost pressures. This just helps ensure they're gonna get a better seal. But there are some downsides to T-bar clamps. One is because you now are using a nut and a wrench, it's actually it's possible to over torque these to the point where you can actually kind of cause damage to the pipe, especially if you're like from out of the intercooler pipe and it's aluminum. You can actually kind of get that to buckle a little bit, bit potentially if you get really wild with the, with the wrench tightening this down. The other slight problem with these is that because it's, a, it's basically a bolt and a nut that's threaded, 
The range of adjustment on these is not very good. There's a lot of different sizes and you gotta you know, do the measurements, make sure you get the right size. And if you're even just a little bit off, like you don't account for the thickness of the hose when you're doing the measurement on the pipe that you gotta put them on, sometimes you either, you either can't get the T-bar clamp over the hose or you, know, it's, you just can't get it tight. So that's where like the worm drives, basically almost half of the ring is, is machined to, to uh, meet the screw. There's more range of adjustment here than with the T-bar clamp. For a long time, we put these on all of our cars, especially the race car, and then we ran into another interesting issue that you can run into with these T-bars, which is that you know even though you have this inner ring, and this is, one, this is actually one that caused a problem for us, you have this inner ring to slide over the hose, and that's great, but you can kind of see that it is not smooth and round anymore. There's, there's kind of some little bends in it. And this is what can happen with, with the shape of the T-bar the as, it, as it gets tight, especially if you're trying to like use this close to its maximum adjustment, is you can actually get a little bend in this. The problem that this, that this guy created for us actually was a boost leak. And uh, in smoke testing the car, we, we ended up finding it. This crease in, in this inner, basically in, in the ring material, was, was not holding any tension on the hose just at that point. And so there was a little leak that was coming out of this T-bar. That's what set us off looking for a better solution to see if there was something something else that we could use that would not be not be maybe as prone to kind of having these little issues and be better for some of these applications. And that's where we found constant tension clamps. Uh, these are the TurboSmart constant tension clamps, Murray clamps. This solves pretty much all of these problems. These clamps, they actually are two pieces. There's an inner ring and an outer ring. And this inner ring, if you look at it, it has got two ridges on it. So when you're when you're tightening this down, you actually have these, these two rings inside that are going to apply separate force, basically give you two ceiling points. That is really helpful. And because this ring slides in, inside of itself, you're never going to have any issues like the worm clamps biting, biting into this. And it also prevents the issue of, of the bending that the T-bar clamps have because this inner ring is, it's, is completely separate from the outer ring. Now this outer ring, <clears throat> you can see it's, it's basically a worm drive clamp, but it has this, these, these waves in it. This is a spring. This is why it's called a constant tension clamp. As you're tightening this down, once you kind of get it to the point where it's snug, then, this, then you're basically applying tension to the spring. So that spring kind of applies even tension all the way around, and you have no resistance or minimal resistance between the inner and the outer ring. So whenever you're tightening, tightening it down, it, it's very hard to over tighten because you're working on the spring and all of that tension is applied evenly all the way around the hose. And because it's a worm drive clamp, you have a lot more range of adjustment. So you have a lot more range, better seal, uh, harder to over torque, and it's not gonna wear your hoses. And so ever since we, we found these, we started using them. This is now like any, anything to do with the cooling system or anything under pressure on the boost system like intercooler hoses, turbo hoses, all that sort of thing. We've been replacing them with these clamps and we've not had any issues since. If you're, if you're chasing a boost leak, if you're having an issue with T-bar clamps, or if you're, you're diving in there and you found, you found that your uh, worm drive clamps have been eating your hoses for breakfast, maybe take a look at these constant tension clamps. You know, they definitely are the best solution we have found to basically, you know, uh, holding pressure on hose and, and keeping them sealed tight, keeping the coolant where it needs to be, not having any vacuum leaks, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, there's more to these hose clamps sometimes when you, when you really get in, into it down to the nitty gritty. So. Hopefully that helps. Um, hopefully you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Team.